So hello everyone, welcome to this video about the Intraset report. So to in today's video we will show you how to configure the database in order to be able to extract, extract an Intraset report. So first thing to do is you have to go to the setting in order to activate the Intraset settings. So let's type in Intraset and when you type that in the search bar you can find here that you can activate the Intraset report. You can click then on save and when this is done, we will just go back to the settings again because there's a few things that you can add when the Intrastat report is activated here. So when this is done, let's just go back to the Intrastat. And here, when it's activated, you can see that you can add different things. For example, for uh, the Belgian companies, you need al also to add uh, a code here if you are in the Flemish, the Walloon or the Brussels region. Let's say that we are in the Brussels region and here you can also add some default code if you want to. So when this is done, let's save again. And then next thing you need to do is that you need to be sure that on your company's information, on your company information, you have a few things that are set up. So let's go here into the settings and update the info. So what I need to check here on my um, company's form is that I have a country selected and I also have the tax ID here. So when this is done, everything is ready on, I mean, on the company side. So let's exit the settings and then let's go create a product that will be used for the interest data. So for that, I can click here, type in products on the main menu, go to my products and then I can create a new one. When I create a new one, let's name it Interested. So we make it, e we make it easy. Um, then in the product tab, for example, we can select that it's a storable product. And when this is done, I still need to have a few things to configure on my, con on my product form. So let's go to the inventory tab. And in the inventory tab, you need to select a weight here. For example, I'll put one. Why do I put one? Because it will be a reference weight that will be easy to modify or to calculate on the invoice on a later basis. When this is done, I can still go to the accounting tab. And here I have a few information about the interested code that I need to mention. So for example, for the commodity code, I can select one from the list. If the one you don't want is not in the list, is if the one you want is not in the list, you can click here on the search more button and select the one from the list that you need. For example, me, I'll just keep it easy and select that one. Then I can select the country of origin. Let's go, let's say that it's come from, it comes from Germany. And when this is done, my product is created and I can save it. Then I still need to uh, check a few thing, things on my contacts. So what I will do here is I will access either my contacts by going to my contact application. And if you don't have the contact application and you are only using the accounting application, you can still access those contacts by going into the accounting application and from the menu here by going to the customer or the vendors and then at the bottom of the list. So here I arrive on my contacts and let's search for the one I want to modify. So here I have Cactus, which is in Luxembourg. And the things I need to check here on my contact form is that I already have a um, country that is set up and also a VAT number here. As you can see here, I don't have a VAT number, so I need to add it in order to be able to generate a tax report on a later basis, uh, I mean an interest tax report. When this is done, I can just save and now I can go create my invoice. So I'll go here to the customer section, invoice, and from there, I'll just create a new invoice. So let's type in the contact I've just modified, Cactus. Oops. Um, then here in the invoice date, I can leave it blank. It will be the date of today, which is what I want. And here I have all the information about the uh, what I will invoice to my customer. So I can add a line and then select here the product that I've just created, interested. And from there, I still need to add a few information. So to add those information, I can go here on the two little button, click on it and add the columns that I need here, which are the, the interested and the product country. I can remove, for example, the 
an identical distribution with which is not needed. And then I have my new columns that appear here. In the interest set here, I can click on it and then select the code that I need. Let's say it's this one. The product here says Germany. It's normal because I've set up that it was Germany on my product. And here, as I told you, you can uh, modify the quantities. For example, let's say that uh, here I um, issued uh, one and a half kilo. And I want to be, I, as you remember, I set like one kilo on my product. So I can put 1.5, which is easy to calculate. Then I can modify the price if needed. And last thing to do is go to the other info tab. And in the in other info tab, I have a few information about the interest stat. So here I have the interest stat, which is Luxembourg based on my customer. And I also have here the interest stat transport. I'll set it like, for example, came by road. And then when this is done, I can confirm my invoice. So that was for customer invoice. And let's see how it goes for a vendor invoice. Let's go here to vendors, deals, create a new one. And then I'll invoice. I'll book the invoice I received from my supplier. I can see here that it's okay. I already have the country and the VAT set up. I can select the date, for example, it was yesterday, add the product, interest add. And then same thing as for the customer invoices, I need to add here my two columns and then complete them. So let's say it's this. Then on the other info tab, I can as well add the transport mode here which will be, for example, this time by error. When this is done, just confirm here that I have an amount here. Let's say it was big amount, and I can confirm it. When this is done, let's check the interest set report. So I'll go here in the reporting section, and here under, under audit reports, I have the interest set report. If I click on it, you can see that I have nothing there. Why? It's because I've selected the June period. So let's go to the July period. And now I have my interest set report for my arrivals and for my dispatch appearing here as I, everything was set correctly in the database. From there, I can either save it or generate it as an, X, uh, an Excel file, an XML, or a PDF. And that was, this, that was it for today's video. Thank you.